The most common problems following concussion though are usually around ocular motor function, meaning how your eyes move and how they work together, meaning, meaning the vergence or how they, um, you know, how both eyes will kind of move in opposite directions to be able to maintain focus on a particular target. Um, so this can be issues with smooth pursuit. So if I bring this pen across back and forth or, or on my eyes, this is testing my smooth pursuit. It's how smooth my eyes can focus on this, your eyes should have a nice smooth fluid motion as they move across. What you'll see with concussion patients is they'll have this saccadic motion where as I bring it across, their eyes will be jerky. So at different time points, or they'll full on lose me in a particular visual field. So if I'm gonna do a visual test on somebody and I'm moving my finger back and forth like this, what I'm looking at is their eyeballs and whether or not they're staying smooth or whether or not there's jerkiness to their visual motion. And if there is, they'll usually report onset of symptoms. They'll usually say that makes me feel weird, it makes me feel dizzy when I do that, um, or a whole host of other things. These people typically have issues with reading because as they're reading a sentence on a page, their eyes are skipping all over the page and they have trouble having a smooth eye motion. So that by the time they finish a sentence, they don't really comprehend what they just read because they may have missed a few words. Um, you know, it, and, and you know, it can create or look like various cognitive problems. So that's smooth pursuits. There's also saccades, which is how well your eyes can lock onto a target and then unlock from that target and then lock onto a different target. And um, this requires a few complex kind of things to have happen, but one of the tests for it is just looking side to side, back and forth. And what the clinician is looking for to see is how fast your eyes can get there, how fast they can unlock from that target, and when they move to the new target, are they overshooting the target, undershooting the target, and do they have to continuously rearrange their eye motion to eventually lock onto the target. You should be able to move your eyes from one target to another in one to two eye motions without, and being able to lock onto it. And you should be able to do that in a fairly quick sequence. Now we can test horizontal saccades, we can test vertical saccades. So that's one issue. The other one is vergence issues. So um, as I bring a, an object closer to my, to my face, I can have convergence of my eyes. Some people have a convergence insufficiency where they start having double vision way out here. Um, that's a convergence insufficiency. And you need both your eyes to come together and that's your depth perception. So if I'm trying to read, both my eyes need to come together on one word. If my eyes aren't able to come together, it'll look double to me and I won't be able to converge on that. So I'll have to, you know, I'll have trouble reading and things like that. A lot of people with concussion have convergence insufficiencies. Convergence insufficiency is also present in between 10 to 30% of healthy people. So even healthy people might have it. It might not be purely concussion related. So you have to keep that in mind as well. There's also visual motion sensitivity. So a lot of movement around people, uh, riding in cars, riding on a train, uh, going to a shopping mall, or walking up and down the aisle at a grocery store, people might feel overwhelmed or there's too much information coming in um, visually. So it's, it's visual motion sensitivity is what's that, what that is called. I'm gonna talk about that one more in depth as we get down the list. Light sensitivity, very common. We don't necessarily know what causes light sensitivity. There's a few theories. One of the theories, at least in the acute phase, is that um, your um, light coming into your eyes creates stimulation of the brain. And if your brain is, is in a low energy state, that hyperactivation or that hyperstimulation can cause an onset or increase in symptoms. There's also been some more recent research that looks at um, the thalamus in the brain, which is kind of the sensory integration component of your brain, having a hyperactivity uh, following concussion. So that might be why. You might have a hyperactive thalamus, which means that's why you feel light sensitive. In terms of treatment for that, that one's a little bit more complex, and so I'll get down to that at the bottom as well. Um, dizziness, gaze stability. People might feel as though when they're walking that everything is moving up and down as if they're looking through a lens of a camera and everything's moving up and down. The way that your brain and your eyes and everything else are set up is that if I'm looking at a target and I turn my head side to side, I should be able to maintain my gaze on that target. So as I'm walking and my body's moving up and down, my eyes should be able to kind of be floating and maintain their position on that. If they can't do that, my eyes will move up and down with my body and I'll feel like I'm looking through a camera. Now. That is, you know, could be a vestibular problem as well. Um, but that's one thing that people will describe is, is this issue with their vestibular ocular reflex and their ability to hold and maintain their gaze on a fixed target while walking. Around.